What's up guys, it's Mike with the Traveling Trucka. Um, we're gonna be working on the semi today and I'm sure you guys remember the solar setup that I did uh, a while back. I made a video on it as well as the um, DC powered AC unit, the mini split that I installed on the back of the truck. Uh, if you guys remember, I had installed a Viver DC to DC battery charger. Uh, lasted maybe two weeks, a week or so before it would only work on 30 amp. Uh, so I got a Renogy. Um, we all know the reviews, they're really, really bad. So, um, well, let's just say it, it broke. It finally broke. I think that one lasted, what, maybe three months in the last video, two, three months, something like that. So I decided to not be cheap this time around and I am going to be installing an Orion XS from Victron. And I think this one's going to work out a lot better. And honestly, if it doesn't, I don't really know any other options. Um, if you know of any other ones that are good and reliable, let me know down in the comments below. All right, guys. So <laughs> I ripped them both out. Like, they, I'm just tossing them. The Renogy one, uh, that one, it, it even on 30 amp, it'll like low power mode, it'll, I don't know, shut down every now and then. This one does still work. This is the Viver. Uh, it's also a 60 amp. This one does work, um, but only on 30 amp. So these are 60 amp, 750 watts. But, now I know this is a mess. Look at this thing, guys, look at this. This is the Orion XS. Look at the size difference. I this is the first thing I I can't get over that, and I mean, it's even smaller than I had expected, really. So we have uh, L and H. Uh, this is going to be for your wiring your switch, and we have an in, a ground, and an out. And if you notice, they're all on one side. That's all there is. Okay. Um, I will tell you this is a 50 amp model, but it is rated for 700 watts um, But I mean guys look at the difference between all of these This one here did cost a lot more. I think this was somewhere around like 250 if I remember correctly um, but So far I'm already impressed and apparently this puts out a lot uh, less heat Which I mean you would think but based on the size most of it is plastic with a metal back um, but on these units both of these, we had a positive and negative in and a positive and negative out. And if you notice on this one, we have an in, an out, and a ground. Just one ground. So, the way this is going to work, um, you want both grounds um, on this adapter here. The problem is, is these wires are 4 gauge, and all of my wires that I ran are 2 gauge wire. So, you can see, I know this isn't the best, um, I ended up having to cut these because they wouldn't even fit on, like, these connectors here. So, what I'm going to try to do is basically put two of them in, and as you can see, it should fit. So, we're going to try that, and all of my connectors are already, uh, like this, so, um... Over here, this power, this is the power coming from the truck battery. Um, and yes, I do have them switched off. They are not going to spark. The switch is off. Um, then I've got the ground wire comes up right here. So these two are for the uh, truck. And then back here, we've got the ground and the power. This is for our battery and, and uh, the lithium battery setup. And yes, I do have the breaker off, so we don't need to worry about that sparking. So once get the out, so we got the out that goes in this, the in goes here. And then what I'm going to do is take both of these grounds for the lithium batteries and the truck uh, batteries with the frame. Um, and I'm going to see if I can get these connected. And then I've got a switch up in the front um, with this positive and negative cable here. So we're going to use these so that there's a manual override switch and that will be connected here. They do give you a jumper cable. So this will actually just work as soon as you have this all connected up. 
but I do want to add the switch in. So give me a minute, guys. I'm going to go ahead and attach these connectors and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so I realize it isn't the best with these wire connections, but all that is set up. And now I'm just going to do the remote connection um, with these two smaller wires that we got here. They just need to be, oh, that one needs to be pulled off. But we'll take these two wires and they're going to go into these connectors. Um, but as you can see, I did test it. We do have power. Um, and this is going to be mounted sideways. And the reason for that is because these wires are so thick, um, it's too difficult to bend them um, if I, you know, would have put it down. So it's just going to go sideways here. And I'll drill that in after I'm done with the wiring. All right, so this is the connector where the silver screw is. The one on the right is your H, and the one on the L is, I'm sorry, the one on the left is L. Um, this H line here is going to be your main on and off switch. Um, and then this here is really an accessory line. So I have that hooked up. These are um, connected up to two switches in the front, so one switch and then the second switch. Um, we will take a look at the app and see what we can actually program on that because I'm not too sure. Um, but either way, you want to remove the little loop that's in there if you are going to be using switches. And then the right one is going to be your on and off and the left will be whatever you want to set in the app. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and then mount it up on the wall and we'll see how it looks. All right. We got it installed. We got our breaker Everything's good. Uh, power switch is on and the breaker is on as well. That goes to the lithium batteries. And we got our connector, as you can see, for the front switches. And we do have power. So I'm going to go up front into the truck and let's check out the app. All right, guys. So this is the tablet and I apologize for the dirty screen. The first thing it made me do was an update before I could get in. Uh, the next thing I did was set up VE Smart Networking. Um, I, all I did was just click click it, and then I hit Join Network, and I clicked the network I already had because I actually have, as you can see, the Smart Shunt uh, and the um, Smart Solar Panel, and now the Orion XS. So basically by connecting it, it's able to see the battery voltage um, coming from the Smart Shunt which is helpful because they're all kind of communicating with each other. Even though the Orion can already see the voltage, it's better where all of them are seeing the same exact voltage and they're not trying to go on their own, you know what I mean? Um, so this is the setting screen. We got charger power only because my setup here, I have a lithium battery. So in this case, it's going to be charger. Charger is enabled. Uh, you have input and output controls, which is pretty cool. Um, because you can actually drop that down, which is handy. Uh, say, oh, sorry. Uh, say if maybe you, you know, maybe your vehicle can't pull 50 amps, so you want to drop it down to say 40 or 30, you can do that. Um, engine shutdown detector. This is that wire that we were talking about. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch this to a regular alternator and not smart. Um, these are our voltage settings. Um, and I'm going to go and verify everything before I go and change it, change it. But for now, I'm just kind of showing you what there are for options. Um, so uh, we got input voltage lockout and battery settings, which should be controlled essentially from uh, they should already be controlled from the. Um, VE smart networking, but for you, if you don't have any of those other things, you're going to want to set up the battery settings. So, uh, let me, um, get this set up real quick and tell you what I put in and then we'll come back and see how it works. All right, guys. So I went ahead and set it and did some research. Um, I have two switches. The one on the left is the H and the one on the right is L. They both provide 12 volts of power when the truck is running and the switch is in the on position. I found out that the second switch cannot actually be used in my particular setup. Uh, so I only have the first switch. Um, now I'm just gonna show you here. 
right? So you can see the switch back here. If I flick the switch up to on, there it goes, and it switches into absorption. Um, and it'll it'll make its way up, you know, wherever. Um, uh, I believe that one's the float, um, and, and maybe that's storage. Uh, but it does give you a chart, some cool little features there. It shows you the voltage, the current, the amount of, I'm sorry. It shows you the voltage, uh, the current, and the amount of power going through. Um, and that's that would be the output side and that's input. So it's actually kind of cool that it does show you both. It shows you what you're drawing from the truck side and what's actually going into the battery, which is really cool con uh, con considering the Viver and the Renogy don't do any of that. And from my understanding, the, um, the Renogy and the Viver are drawing way more power than this is. Like here you can see, it, you know, this one's about a few, a few watts higher but not bad at all. Um, now the output is 14.5, input voltage is 14.1. That's what the semi batteries are right now. Um, and this is what the batteries are for the um, lithium bank, which my batteries are fully charged at 14.6. Um, and I have it set to about 14.52. I try to keep the voltage just a little bit lower, but that does give us full stats, uh, and it looks like we also have history records, um, how long it's been running, how much it's charged. Uh, so pretty cool. Um, you know, I've got three of these things here, so we've got the smart shunt as well. Uh, this just tells us our battery level, as you can see, 14.53 volts, which is right at where we need to be. Um, this is how much power is being drawn right now, and then our truck batteries are 1409 and then i also have the smart uh solar as well which i don't think it's going to draw be drawing anything nope zero watts because we're already charged up um yeah you can see the solars are the solar panels are working it's just there's no need because the voltage is already high so it's in a float mode but that's it guys. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and test it over the next few days and we will see how it works. All right guys, so real quick, I wanna say something that I'm noticing now uh, that is just awesome. Uh, so this is how much power is being drawn from the truck, right? 665 watts. Uh, this is how much is going to the battery. That voltage there is direct at the battery. It's 13.3, check this out. I've got 13.8 volts at a low regular idle. Um, now with the Viver, I never, I was usually, I would say the voltage was probably at about 13.1 volts. Um, sometimes like 12.9 uh, volts is what I would have when I was running the full 60 amps. Now I know we're only drawing 50 and it is a 10 amp difference but really the voltage would not if this if i added a second one of these units and set it to 10 amps um you know in the settings like if i change input current to 10 amp uh 10 amps then i'll tell you right now that battery voltage at 13.8 might just drop down to like 13.6 at the lowest which is impressive I actually might consider picking up a second one and wiring it right next to the one I just installed now and then redo all the wires because if this actually works as good as it is right now, um, this truck could handle probably, I don't know, it's hard to say for sure, but I could probably get about 80 amps safely and that would help out a lot with the mini split unit that I have installed here. So I gotta say, I am really, really impressed with this so far. But again, guys, I'm going to uh, try this out for a few days, make another video, and I'll let you, get, let you guys know what I think about it. Well, 
after a few days of trying this out, it's been working really good. Uh, I have no complaints whatsoever, and I think this system is just so much better, especially when you adjust the alternator settings. There was a lot of really good uh, features in there where basically I have it set up so that if the switch is on uh, the main cutoff, if you turn the key to on, if, but don't start the engine, it won't actually turn the charger on, which is really handy. Uh, when you start the truck, uh, after I get to a certain voltage on the batteries, then it will automatically kick on the charger. And, and I think that's extremely helpful. Uh, it helps me kind of keep the truck batteries charged up. So I, I like that a lot. Uh, anyways, guys, uh, if you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, just comment down below and I'll do my best to answer every single comment that I can. All right, guys, take it easy.